Coach, when I think of the trip to College Station, all I can think is two years ago, and I will admit that I first looked up the weather forecast before you departed this week, and it's 60s and 40s and maybe some rain. What, what relief is that, and what are your memories of that last trip to College Station? Um, it was memorable. <laughs> it was one of the, one of the stories that um, anyone involved is going to be telling for a long time obviously just getting caught in that snowstorm. Um, don't think there's a snowstorm in our forecast, but um, we, it looks like we are having to fly into Houston due to some um, uh, airport construction in College Station. So it's not fun, but it's what it is and you make, make it work. Cora. Kelly, I wanted to ask you more about um, college game day coming to Knoxville. You know, last season, it had been 11 years before they did it for a women's basketball game. Now they're coming back with, you know, three shows this season. Um, how important is that, you know, investment in shows like that in adding or giving women's basketball fans more, you know, analysis, storytelling um, when it comes to, you know, growing the game still? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's great. I think it's uh, obviously one of the, um, well-known coverages for sports and especially in, in college and um, you know to have them continue to do women's games just uh, shows the excitement that, that we have in our game and the commitment and you know hopefully uh, all the games that they have will be great games and it'll be um, really high quality basketball because that's that's what we have we have a lot of really good basketball in the women's game right now Maria. Coach, you've had some noon tips, some 1 p.m. tips. This is the opposite of those tips. Nine o'clock tip. How do you keep your team engaged when they're basically having to sit around all day? You can't put them in study hall. There's no classes right now. How do, how do you deal with that late tip on the road? Well, what we'll do is try to shorten the day. Um, they'll sleep in longer, which it makes it a little bit more difficult because we're on, you know, our body's on Eastern time. Um, but we'll try to shorten the day on, on that end. Um, you know, we'll break it up. We'll, we'll have a shoot around and film in the middle of the day so that it's, you know, uh, not such a long time sitting around. Um, but hey, they'll, they'll, they'll be fine. It is past my bedtime when we, when we tip, but uh, player, players should be fine. Cora. Um, there's been two games in a row now where um, a player from the opposing team has hit, you know, five or six three pointers against you guys, just from watching film, you know, what kind of stuck out to you about that and, and what have been kind of the discussions around like not letting that happen again or, or what steps to take to make sure that, you know, there isn't a player who, who is, you know, getting those opportunities. Yeah, I, you know, we talked not specifically about that as much as just our awareness and our, our um, urgency intensity on the defensive end we've had some good moments I mean we've had some good possessions we've had some good halves but we've also um, put together some quarters that were very lacking on the defensive end and you know it's just the challenge we had to our team um, we talked about where we need to be better we talked about how we need to get there and then tried to go out and do those things defensively um, I think it starts and we've gotten better, but we're we're not anywhere near where we need to be. Starts inward, you know. You got to look at who you are and and your priorities, and it's got to be important to you when you take the court. And it's not just half of the game or one quarter. It's got to be every single possession, and we're not quite there yet. Maria, coach, kind of a follow up to that. You're number one in scoring offense. You are not having trouble scoring right now in the SEC, but number 11 in scoring defense. And I know you've mentioned before that is a that's a situation that can come back to bite you in this league. How do, how do you how are you addressing that in terms of team defense? And then the second part, I know Texas A&M is you know, down players new head coach, even, you know, familiar head coach, but what, what challenges do, do the Aggies still present to Tennessee? Yeah, well, first off, um, those stats, we, we shared those conference stats with our players yesterday. And, and, you know, again, just talking very honestly about where we are and where we need to be, where we got to grow and just, you know, tried to, tried to instill the urgency. And, um, you know, the other thing we tried to say was, 
learn from it after a win. Don't wait till a loss. Learn from it after a win. And that's what we're trying to, you know, make sure that we do. Um, because it will. I mean, you can't you, you can't continue to win at, at that level. Um, uh, in terms of Texas A&M, they're athletic. Um, they've got uh, good size. They're going to be aggressive on both ends of the court. Obviously, they're down numbers wise in terms of their roster. Um, but that, you know, it. I think part of the challenge is, again, just not overlooking someone. Um, that's, I think, you know, there's a lot of human nature in that, but as athletes and, and as a, as a team, that's trying to be the best we can be. You can't do that because as soon as you relax, you know, they get hot, they get happy, they find a win. And I, I think it's, you know, they're going to play hard. They're going to be motivated. Um, they're going to be physical and, you know, we have to be ready. Um, we have to be ready to guard one-on-one. -on -one. We have to be ready to guard in the paint. We have to be ready to, to do the job we need to do on the board. So in every aspect, I expect to go to Texas A&M and, and be sharp because we need to be sharp. Cora. Kind of sticking with defense, you know, you've said before that, you know, Jordan Walker really helped set the tone for your defense. So um, could you kind of say, uh, explain how she has um, contributed in, in maybe in practices as you guys, you know, defense is a constant work in progress and there have been steps made, but how has her presence and, you know, her kind of um, commitment on the defensive end helped that with that progress? Yeah, so first off, Jordan Walker's tough. Um, and I think she takes a lot of pride in the defensive end. You never have to worry about her relaxing on that end of the court. You never do. She's, she's always going to play hard. She draws the toughest matchups. Um, she's typically guarding, um, uh, or she has consistently been matched up with our opponent's, uh, best guard. Um, and that's, that's a low, I mean, she, she's guarding, uh, her ask on the defensive end in particular has, has been really high, but she also rebounds. She's also tough. She has to handle the ball. She, she does a lot for us. And, um, but you know, just when you talk about the defense, I know what I'm getting from her. I know every single day what I'm getting for her. She really sets the tone. And, um, you know, I think that's important for us moving forward too. Maria. Coach, Jordan Horston's career number 400 assist, and then, of course, eighth of the game, was set up in a way that probably just encap encapsulates how much better y'all are playing as a team. Tess Darby gets the steal, goes to the floor, gets it ahead to Jordan Walker. Jordan Walker, I think, takes one dribble max and passes it ahead to Jordan, who has a clear lane to the basket, who makes the extra pass to Rakia. And boom, she's in the in the record books. Is that just a, a play that sort of sums up Tennessee the way you're playing right now on offense? Yeah, I think um, you know we're looking to share the ball. Um, I think we've got a lot of different scores, and I think they're all comfortable with that. I think our players are excited about that. Um, you know, um, you know, Tess started it on the defensive end. I'm excited about her and her, her growth there. But I know you, the question's more offensively related, but you know, Jordan is a playmaker, and when she makes plays, she's aggressive and always looking to make plays, and that's good for our offense. Um, but it's not just Jordan, right? It's not just Rakia. It is Tess. It's Sarah. It's Caroline. It's Jillian. Jasmine. Uh, Jasmine. The other Jasmine. I, it, Jordan Walker. It takes everybody on the team um, because if if Tess is not spacing the defense out, you don't have one on one opportunities. It, you know, I mean, I just think they're all doing their part right now because they understand it and they believe in it. Quick follow-up. As soon as I said the word offense, I realized that play actually started on defense. And is Tess, um, is, is she kind of an underrated defender? Is she sort of sneaking up on people right now in terms of her defense and getting better at it? Yeah, I think we found our niche with Tess defensively. Um, you know, at the end of the game, we weren't, at Vanderbilt, we weren't getting stops. We had to put Tess back in on the defensive end, uh, not because of her quickness um, and her lateral speed, but just of her IQ. And she'll communicate. She understands where she needs to be. Um, we found we found what kind of works for her, and she's continuing to work to get better. Um but uh, uh, proud of her and her effort there because that's been important. That's been important growth. 
obviously we everyone sees what she does on the offensive end but this year more so than last we we can keep her out on the court longer because she's being productive on the defensive end Cora kind of going off Jordan Horston once again um she's one of four right now but she could be very easily one of two by the end of the season because Alexis Hornbuckle is the only one in that group with more than 700 rebounds and Jordan's at 599 so you know with the way she rebounds she could very easily become one of two and you being one of the great players in this program you played with some of the greatest players in this program could you put it into context how difficult it is to be in an elite group with the great players who have come through this program to be one of four or one of two of something yeah there obviously when you think of Tennessee you think of the legends that have graced the court here um, that have put this jersey on there there's so many talented players uh, you know that have that have done a lot of great things and obviously I'm so happy for Jordan that she's mentioned in that um in that list uh, she's been a stat sh stuffer you know she she's done a lot of things for this program and for a team each and every year and you know the other thing that I think is really cool is you know thinking back who she was as a freshman and just really being along for the ride and just being able to watch her growth and um, it's been exciting. It's been really exciting. Um, she, she's super talented and, and now she's a talented, experienced college player. And, um, and I'm just really proud of her. Maria. Coach, it's a hard jump from high school to college, particularly in the post. And last season, Caroline Striplin, of course, was a freshman and wasn't finding a lot of minutes. She's playing behind post players. This year, she's carved out her own spot. Just how has she gotten better and how, how much is, I mean, career high against Vanderbilt and points, how much is she helping you right now? Oh, well, I think one of the things that she does uh, that, that helps everybody, uh, she communicates. She talks really well on the court. Therefore, she is easy to play with. Uh, you, know, you know what's going on behind you because she's talking you through it. Um, she is a very good passer. So therefore, when you have someone that can that has that ability to pass, again, she makes everyone better. And I think that it, it, that alone it helps our team, right? Two things: she makes everyone better, but she can score, uh, she can shoot, she's a physical rebounder. Uh, defensively, she's come a long way from last year. She's still working on it, and we're still um, finding her niche as well, finding where. She can be really successful defensively, um, but proud of her mindset and her effort. Like she, she's worked. Um, she's worked in practice. She's worked outside of practice. Um, and, and, you know, it's not easy. It's not, I know we talked about that multiple times. It's not easy when you're, when you're not getting the minutes you want to get, but, you know, she went out there and, and put the work in so that when it was her time, when when we call her name, she's ready to produce. And we had a lot of confidence in her. We drew, we were just stacked up. You know, we had a lot of a lot of post players and um, unforeseen circumstances gives her that opportunity and she's making the most of it. Quick follow up. And, and this is a compliment. I'm sure Caroline Stripler's never heard of them, but you have. She is strong as can be on the court. I, at, at first, I, I laughed and told somebody she reminds me a little bit of the old corn fed chicks that, that Pat had. Is, is that an accurate observation that she is? I mean, she she doesn't look physically imposing, but she's not somebody I think anybody wants to collide with out there. Yeah, she's she's very strong very strong. She, um, and she carries that weight really well in, in terms of uh, still being able to move, getting up and down the floor. I think uh, some people are strong in the weight room and don't translate it to the court. She's strong on the court. Uh, and I think uh, that physicality, it, we need it um, because our other, you know, the other players playing in that position don't necessarily have her strength on the court her court strength, they have different strengths. You know, Jillian has a little bit more size. Jasmine has a little bit more speed and quickness. And it's, you know, we we're kind of piecing things together with those three players. And obviously what Caroline brings is uh, really important. Laura. 
Sarah Puckett is coming off of a few games that weren't her best offensively, but, you know, I, I was still seeing, you know, good contributions while she's on the court. Um, there was a moment Sunday in the third quarter, I think it was, um, she had a turnover. She came out, um, but you stopped her and, and had a little conversation before she went to the bench. Um, what have you learned that, you know, maybe she needs from you as a coach when maybe she's in a little bit of a slump and, and what's, what, what's been your message to her right now? Well, I think Sarah's hard on herself. Sarah wants to be good. Um, so she she takes things um, and, and to really uh, carries them hard, you know, she, because she's she puts in work and um, she has goals and she wants to wants to be good, wants to do it right. Um, sometimes sometimes I have to uh, pat her on the back and love her up because of that. And sometimes I have to remind her she's got to be good. And because she can be. So uh, that was a little probably a combination <laughs> of, of what she needed in that moment. And, you know, uh, Sarah's so she's so talented and her being on the court again. Uh, we talk about people that make everybody better. Um, you know, Rakia and Sarah are great compliments on the court together. I love those two on the court together. Foul trouble a little bit in Vanderbilt prohibited me from, from using that lineup a lot, but um, those two give me a lot of options in terms of uh, what we can do on the offensive end and, and the defensive end, to be quite honest. Maria? Just to logistics of travel, just to clarify, so you're going to fly to Houston and then bus to College Station and then bus back to Houston. Well, it, at least it's not going to snow. And you'll delay a little bit, but it's not supposed to snow. So I just want to clarify that. Going to it's going to be a little bit longer trip. And obviously, you know, you mentioned it. You've got a nine o'clock tip Eastern time on Thursday, and that's late. And so we'll be we'll be arriving pretty pretty early in the morning on Friday. Cora, um, there's kind of just been like different. Not, there's been different ways that your team has had to win um, in these four SEC games because, you know, it's still been a game in the fourth quarter. Um, obviously, it'd be you know, great to kind of cruise through that second half, but there's been different ways that this team has had to find to win. How valuable is that for them to be in these situations and to um, just, again, find ways to win every night? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I remember walking off the court uh, against Florida thinking that was a very valuable game and a very valuable lesson for us and you know hoping that we would be better in that situation moving forward I now feel like we've had several of those um you know the the thing that we haven't done well we've talked about our defense especially our second half defense hasn't we, we we've given up too many points in the second half uh, but our team has found ways to continue to score during that drought defensively and so um you know for us we've got to uh, continue to make sure we're sharp, find ways to win, uh, find ways to score, to keep ourselves um, in those games where we're not producing on the defensive end, um, but also on the boards. Uh, I think um, we've done a done a good job on the boards down the stretch to um, either keep keep our opponents um, from getting extra shots or giving ourselves extra opportunities on the offensive end, and you know that's where you know, you want to be consistent in, in those areas. I want to be consistent on the defensive end. Once we kind of check that box, I, I think we'll, we'll feel a lot better about where we're at. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Thank you guys.